Uh, we'll go to uh, Mick Gooder now, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Social Justice Commissioner in the Australian Human Rights Commission. Uh, Mick, in my question to you last year, you said you felt like curling up under a blanket given uh, what you saw as a state of play with constitutional, rec uh, constitutional recognition. Are you still feeling uh, that despondent? Mate, I get in and out of that blanket and doing it a fair bit, and it's waxing and waning all the time. Um, and as we go through this process, I've been, I've been involved this right from the go, um, the new iteration of it from around 2007 when John Howard first proposed constitutional recognition and it's been a series of peaks and troughs and sometimes I think we've got it in our hands and then other days it just slips past. But what we have to do, and, and I agree with Noel, and tomorrow when I do my speech about property rights, uh, after the week we've had here in Australia, we're arguing, as Noel eloquently said today, there has to be a resetting of this relationship. And the, rela the resetting of the relationship has got to be set by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. At this very forum, this time last year, you'll recall, Charlie, we were, we were in negotiation with the then Prime Minister, Tony Abbott, about whether there would be a series of Indigenous-led consultations. We finally got there. And we're in the process of that right now. And we do that for two reasons. One is... Every political party has said we will not proceed with this unless it accords with the wishes of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. So we're in the process of answering that question. But Noel also talked about the 3% mouse controlling the 97% elephant. And this is our way of doing it. Our consultations will answer the question, what does recognition mean? for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. And it means this resetting of the relationship. It means that there has to be a new direction after the referendum votes on a Saturday sometime in the future. And it can't be we do that on Saturday and it's business as usual on Sunday. This fundamental change that Noel speaks of has got to happen. It has to happen because of the events that Noel talks about in Arakoon. It has to happen because of the events we saw in Don Dale. A royal commission, I'm going to tell you, will not provide us the answers to the overarching question of where Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people fit in this country. So our consultations will go down the track of asking Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, what does recognition mean for you? And as far as I'm concerned, we've got to treat it as Noel talks about as that hook. We cannot set out in a constitution all the things that we need to change. It will never get through. I'd like to probably attempt rubbing out this constitution and starting again, but I doubt whether there's the appetite for that with the politicians. But barring that, we've got to put those hooks in. What will set it up for us to progress? What will be the fundamental relationship between government and our people? At what level will that relationship be set? Noel talked about First Nations. Tony McAvoy, our first senior counsel, talks about the Assembly of First Nations. And I've joined with Noel, uh, Tony, and a, and a few other people like Valerie Coombs and, and Robin Quiggan and Jeff Scott talking about this. And we talked about it at, 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 at Native Title Conferences for a few years. There's endorsement from the majority of people from those conferences to go ahead. But those settlements we talk about, and not just settlements between different nations and government, we're talking about settlements between different nations and other nations. 
So we shouldn't be scared of this. And to give you a clue here, I think in any other country, the Noongar Agreement they've developed, they've just signed off of in, in South West WA, in any other country would call a treaty. It's a settlement. There's an act of parliament that's gone through recognising the six clans of the Noongar people as the traditional owners. We're heading towards a settlement in that part of Australia. Go to the Indigenous land use agreements that we're seeing being developed. The top end of them, as part of my job is to look at native title, are settlements. Go to Kwandamooka, Minjirubar, Stradbroke Island in the middle of Moreton Bay and talk to the Kwandamooka people about their native title. How they've now got a seat at the table for any major event that happens on Minjirubar, on their country. The people on Stradbroke Island, the white people, have to come to terms with Aboriginal people last or finally having a say in what happens on their country. And I can tell you this, those people are finding it pretty difficult. They try to attack the structures that set it up. What is the prescribed query corporate and who are they answerable to? Well, I'll tell them now, they're answerable to the traditional owners, the, the New Knuckle and the Noogie people on Stradbroke Island. They're not answerable to the Chamber of Commerce anymore. So, Charlie, these are the settlements that we've got to think about. Because if we don't, if we go ahead and, as Noel described it, put a plaque in the Constitution, with some nice words, none of this other stuff's gonna change. Mm -hmm. And this is what the challenge is for us now. How do we actually do something that makes that change happen? And I've always said it, Charlie, the journey is gonna be, I know it's a cliche, the journey's gonna be more important than the destination because the journey in this case is gonna have to work out where we fit is First Nations people in this country. And I'm going to tell you, learning the lessons from Kwandamooka country, some people are going to find that really uncomfortable. But we've got to confront it. I'd love to see a day when we don't care about whether we were invaded, colonised or settled. All I know is about 220 years ago, something happened. I'm not that interested in having a semantic argument about what it was, but they need to understand what happened. And a part of the thing I'm learning as I go through this is I think this country, during that process, has got to enter into some form of what I call truth-telling. And when I talk about truth-telling and we talk about the truth will free you, my sense is the truth will free non-Indigenous Australians more than it'll free us. It'll free you to have these conversations. But the truth has got to be out there. I was in Tarum about a month ago when the Yemen people, that's my dad's mob, got their native title. The federal court judge said, I'm not here to give you your native title because you've had your native title for 20 or 30,000 years. I cannot give you something you already have. What I'm going to do is recognise your native title in this white book. But the Yemen people were part of the Hornet Bank massacre. After our mob being poisoned, they came out and they killed a family. The reprisals for that killing went on for something like 25 years. That's my people being lined up and killed indiscriminately. There was a baby born alive at that time and he grew up, basically had permission in central Queensland to go and shoot any Aboriginal person he wanted. 
But when we talk about the worst mass murder in this country, they talk about Martin Bryant. Let me tell you, in Queensland, there's another bloke getting around who probably killed a whole lot more people than Martin Bryant did. This is the truth telling we've got to come to. And it's not about making people feel guilty. I think guilt, yeah, has its uses, but in this case, you feel guilty if you want. I'm not going to make you feel guilty, but you've got to hear the truth. And it's this truth as we go through this journey towards this constitutional recognition that will guide us as a people, as an Australian people, to say this has got to be meaningful and we've got to reset the relationship with our First Peoples. Mm -hmm. What's a realistic um, uh, time frame, do you think? I don't know, mate. I, 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 I'm the one who was out there saying we've got to push it. Um, our first round of three consultations tells us we've probably got to ease up a bit. I, I don't think we're going to get anywhere near the 27th of May next year as the day for the referendum, although there was some symmetry being 50 years after the 1967 referendum. I don't think we're going to get there. And I've been constantly told in this, we've got to get it done right. We can't focus on getting it done right now. Mm. All right. Thanks, uh, thanks, Mick. We're, we'll hear from... Uh...